Good morning, folks. Thunder Induced Take 4. Happy birthday, Van Allen probes. The linked article is quite long with four separate videos, but essentially we're measuring the radiation belts surrounding our planet. Always a top recommendation when this topic comes up. Typhoon Ator was a bane in the Philippines a few weeks ago, but the story here is radar reflectivity within the storm. Explanation is linked below. Gotta take a jab and a little laugh at the official ISON crew. You want to see some ruffled feathers? He's trying to explain away why NASA wouldn't, quote, waste observing resources on ice on recovery when it was nearly behind the sun. But he must think none of us remember the precedent set with Elenin, which they claimed was nothing all along, but which they flipped the stereo spacecraft for to give us shots of the flyby. White House released a paper on weather readiness in terms of our electrical grid. Great, right? <laughs> Not a word about space weather, the sun, solar flares, CMEs, auroras, etc. Speaking of weather, top concern in the tropics is coming off the African coastline this morning with a good shot at strengthening. Solar wind gave us what we expected. A speed ramp followed yesterday's density spike as the coronal hole stream arrived, but not terribly powerfully. Just enough to cause geomagnetic instability and strong magnetometer readings. The low energy protons kept rising throughout the day, which did take a good cut at our electron flux, but the vastly more important high energy protons did remain low. Folks, you know the Earth has been underquaking for weeks on end now. That's space weather arrival with another coronal hole facing Earth back there. Ceres about to geocentrically oppose Neptune, the watch remained above the midline. Not two hours after yesterday's news, Alaska let rip a 7.0 followed by multiple aftershocks. Allegedly, unrelated to that is a nearly simultaneous ramp up in the eruptive force ongoing nearby from two weeks ago. Four buoys were put into event mode by the quake. There was no tsunami and most were small deviations, but one was a 60 meter back and forth and a few hours decreasing down to 15 or 20 through this morning. Magnetic connectivity. If you're having trouble picturing why those grainy looking connections are on the backside, let's take a look at the planets. The further out the planet, the more arc the interplanetary magnetic field. Hopefully you can see how Mars and Mercury might connect on the back side from where Earth is sitting, while Venus connects on the Earth-facing side. Well folks, let's take another look back at yesterday for that C8 and CME that came from the growing incoming active region. All endless spirals updated, each showing a clear impact to Earth tonight or tomorrow. This impact may be significant as vast amounts of ejecta were clocked in excess of a thousand kilometers per second. It won't be that fast when it hits Earth, but we could see major auroras, geomagnetic storms, and it'll be a good chance for us to test our ever-fading magnetic shield. I do not, however, expect satellite damage or major blackouts. Shots of our star to close? Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.45 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.